Hello everyone, my name is Kushal Ingre and today we will discuss about the bacterial chromosomes. So as it is a very essential part of our syllabus. So here, one by one we will learn about the different terminologies and aspects regarding to the bacterial chromosome. So friends, as we know that the prokaryotes contain the single double stranded circular DNA chromosome. This DNA or this chromosome is present within the cytoplasm of the bacteria. Actually, we know that the prokaryotes doesn't contain any nucleus. That's why this DNA is actually present within the, not within the nucleus, but directly in the cytoplasm. So that's why we know that the transcription and translation, these are the coupled processes which occurred in the prokaryotes. So this chromosome is present in a dense clump and that dense clump of the chromosome is called as the nucleoid. This nucleoid is actually present or this nucleoid is directly embedded within the cytoplasm. So this nucleoid is not membrane bound structure. That's why this nucleoid is directly embedded within the cytoplasm. The genome size of the E. coli bacteria is near about 4.6 MB and this DNA is near about or approximately 1000 mm long. This bacteria may contain four identical copies of the chromosome and the number of these copies is depend on the species and growth condition of the bacteria. Now as we know that the prokaryotic cell having a smaller size and in case of the E. coli, if you see, already we have seen in a previous slide that the E. coli contains near about 4.6 megabyte genome. But this huge size may be fit within the small size of the bacteria, but how it is possible because of its supercoiled nature. So whatever the DNA is present, actually it undergoes the coiling and this extra coiling is called as the supercoiling. A typical bacterial chromosome contains a few thousand different genes that is structural gene sequences these structural gene sequences nothing but they encodes the proteins whereas non-transcribed dna between adjacent genes are termed as the intergenic region so this huge size of the dna may be fit within the bacteria because of the supercoiling. So in case of the bacteria, particularly in case of the E. coli, this DNA is near about 10,000 times folded within the bacterial cytoplasm. So while formation of the folding of this DNA, it undergoes the formation of the loop. So there is a loop formation. So again, this loop formation is nothing but present or depend on the species and its number also varies from species to species. So what happens here that because of the loop formation, the DNA undergoes the folding and the huge size of the DNA can be fit within the smaller size. So this coiling of the DNA is accompanied or controlled by the two different enzymes. First enzyme is nothing but it is the DNA gyrase. This DNA gyrase is also called as the DNA topoisomerase type 2 enzyme. Second one it is DNA topoisomerase 1 this enzyme will relax the negative supercoiling. So the action of these two enzymes that is DNA topoisomerase 2 and DNA topoisomerase 1 will be responsible for the supercoiling of the DNA. 